Good morning, uh, Chairwoman Jackson. Good morning. Lee, Ranking Member Biggs and Chairman Nadler and members of the Subcommittee on Crime, Terrorism and Homeland Security. Thank you for the invitation to testify on my legislation, the Fair and Independent Experts and Clemency Act, also known as the Fix Clemency Act. In the U.S., there are approximately 2 million people incarcerated in the criminal legal system and over 200,000 in federal custody, disproportionately black, Latino, indigenous, disabled, and LGBTQ+. Our nation has the highest incarceration rate of any country in the world. This should ring alarm bells for every lawmaker because it impacts mass incarceration each and every one of our districts. And it should stoke the moral outrage of everyone who calls this nation home, as this is a shameful legacy. People locked in cages throughout this nation, real people, their families and friends are serving their sentences alongside them. I know this all too well, growing up with an incarcerated parent. I can only imagine how different my own childhood would have been if my father was able to get the medical help and treatment he desperately needed and deserved. Instead, his opioid addiction, which today would be treated as a public health issue, was criminalized and his addiction robbed me of his physical presence during my most formative years. Today, my father, Martin Terrell, like millions of black men and women, is a survivor of mass incarceration. He's attained multiple degrees, gone on to be a college professor and published author. Nonetheless, his presence having been robbed, my having been robbed of his presence during my formative years, it has been an ongoing a healing process for myself and our family. My story is hardly an anomaly. Across the country, more than five million children have experienced the incarceration of a parent. As policymakers, we must reject this unjust status quo and disrupt the cycle and legacy in this country of treating trauma with more trauma. We need to end the crisis of mass incarceration and fixing our clemency process is a central part of the solution. That is why I'm proud to have introduced the Fixed Clemency Act with two distinguished members of the Judiciary Committee, Representatives Bush and Jeffries. My legislation would transform how clemency works by replacing the redundant and biased Department of Justice process with a new and independent U.S. Clemency Board. The board would be composed of experts in fields like behavioral health and rehabilitation appointed by the president. There would also be a seat at the table for a person who is formerly incarcerated, because I believe the people closest to the pain should be the closest to the power, driving and informing the policy making. Currently, applications for clemency are under the full control of staff in the Department of Justice and must undergo repeated scrutiny with duplicative layers of bureaucratic review. Experts have warned that this structure creates a prosecutorial bias against each applicant and at any point in this process, one lone staffer can unilaterally prevent an application from moving forward. The Fixed Clemency Act makes clear that prosecutors and people who run prisons should not have outsized influence when it comes to evaluating clemency applicants. With my bill, the newly created board would be transparent and independent. All recommendations by the board would be transmitted directly to the president and included in an annual report to Congress. With more than 17,000 clemency applications pending for years before the DOJ, we must pass the Fixed Clemency Act. That's over 17,000 people and their lives hang in the balance. I'm proud that my bill was drafted in close partnership with lawyers, constitutional scholars, advocates from across the political spectrum, and those who understand clemency best, people who are formerly incarcerated, people like Danielle Metz, who is a recipient of clemency herself. She was punished with three consecutive life sentences and an additional 20 years in federal prison for nonviolent drug offenses. She served more than two decades in prison away from family and her children before her sentence was finally commuted. I'm grateful for her partnership in this legislation. Congress has the power to legislate a just and equitable clemency process by passing my legislation to create an independent board. I applaud President Biden for granting 78 commutations and pardons last month. It establishes a historic precedent and will help set the individuals, their families and communities on a pathway to healing. We must continue this historic momentum to truly confront the backlog of over 17,000 applications and prevent it from ever occurring again. There must be structural change. More than 150 years ago, Congress created the current clemency process, and now it is time for Congress to fix it. Thank you.